guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 5 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Pixis OS and let me tell you I tried to do a video on the Pixis OS earlier on January 2021 but then the build was pulled or something as far as I remember it was not available in the websites so that's the reason why I am doing this right now and here as you can see this is the latest build as of right now which has been released recently this is the 5th February 2021 build and here you can see from the build date and it says Pixis OS official of course based on Android 11 and it has two separate versions of this ROM one comes with the G apps and one does not come with the G apps so it's vanilla and you can see all these change logs over here pretty long change log you can read it out from here but let me tell you Pixis OS for me at least has been one of the best ROMs for the Redmi Note 5 Pro in my personal opinion I'm gonna show you how and why. So if you want to flash this particular ROM, you can click on the card right there. You do not need to like decrypt or something because on the Redmi Note 5 Pro, the storage is already decrypted when you format data. I think so. And here I did not flash any fscript disabler or something. No need of any decryption kind of method. And I have used the latest Orange Fox Recovery R11. I'll link that below or link everything that you need below in the description. Do not worry. So in the Android version or the about section here, it shows the logo up there and the Pixis OS version is 4.0.4 G apps official build of course and the Android version is Android 11 as you can see from here and if you notice the security patch the latest of February 5th 2021 security patch so comes with the latest security patch that's great and the stock kernel here is the Stormbreaker ES old cam kind of thing over here it says and there is a build date again 4th February 2021 and there is the build number now in the system panel we have updated section and here as you can see this is how the system updater looks like of course if you were on the previous build it might work or it may not i'm not really sure but yes the updater is still present you can check for updates from here and there is the like last checked update kind of thing and the device name it says over there and the maintainer's name is shipun kumar mahanta and you can like click over here and go to the XDA thread or donate to the developers. So that's great. And on the top section, it shows the Pixis OS updater and you can choose the preferences and stuff from here. This updater will work for the Redmi Note 5 Pro's Pixis OS. And the stock keyboard over here is Gboard because I have flashed the GF included version of course. Now, if you're noticing the stock launcher, this is the Pixis launcher by default present over here. There are plethora of settings that you can see from here that there is the notification dots and we have add icon on home screen and stuff then we have allow home screen rotation show google app and hidden and protected apps is there so this is the app lock so if you go into that as you can see i have to tap the fingerprint scanner and right now if i go into that there is the lock and hide option so you can lock or hide any particular app that you would like i have locked the telegram app i'll show you that later on and there is a show gradient on top and the show gradient on bottom and you can also disable the suggestions so that's a great thing in my opinion that you can disable these suggestions because I don't like it. And there is the icon pack changing option. If you have any icon pack installed, you can change it from here. And in the settings, there is no mention that there is the double tap to sleep in the home screen. But yes, it is there. As you can see, if I double tap anywhere on the home screen, it makes the phone sleep. This is a really cool feature. And if you're noticing the fingerprint scanner over here, and it unlocks fairly, fairly fast in my opinion, even with my right hand's index finger, as you can see, this is how fast and snappy the fingerprint scanner is. It is really, really amazing experience with the fingerprint scanner, no issues whatsoever. And on the stock launcher to the left, we have this Google's Discover page. And here, if you swipe down anywhere on the home screen, you get the quick settings panel. And if you swipe up, you get the app drawer and stuff. And on the home screen, as you can see, the widgets are working totally fine. No issues whatsoever. And I did not face any kind of lags or stutters over here. And you can search for particular apps like this over here. And by the way, as I have logged the Telegram app, if you are noticing, as you can see, if I tap on the Telegram app right now, it shows this fingerprint scanner option. And there is a pin using option too. So you can use either the pin or the fingerprint scanner. So if I scan my fingerprint right now, as you can see, I'm in the Telegram app. And the app lock feature of the launcher does work fine. No issues with that. Now talking about the quick settings panel, here is how it looks like again. And if you tap on this edit icon, you can add multiple toggles, but in my personal experience, I do not see much of the quick toggles that there is no like the reboot toggle or stuff like that or there is no FPS info option. Of course, there is no OxygenOS kind of screen recorder, but there are the direct sound and stuff. Live caption mode is there, but it lacks some toggles in my personal opinion. If you're coming from other custom ROMs, you will miss them. 
and here in this like screen recording option we have the android 11 kind of screen recorder with that you can record the device audio and the microphone audio at the same time so that's a great feature if you want to record gameplay or something right now let me just jump into the settings and show you how the settings looks like and as you can see this is how it looks we have the network internet and stuff connected device a lot of like similar stuff with other roms of course and here the wall calling and stuff should be working fine but i did not test it personally because i don't have a sim card in this device yet but they should be working fine there is the explore section where you find all the customizations and if i go into that this is how it looks like we have this about pixies OS over here again and here we have the status bar option now over here we have the traffic indicator so you can enable that if you want to let me go back we have the status bar items and here we have the headset bluetooth that's the icons and the battery wi-fi ethernet everything else you can enable or disable them and we have the battery icon style and you can change it to circle dotted circle field circle etc but no big circle kind of stuff are there and we have the battery percentage changing option you can change it to next to the icon and right now i have it on next to the icon that's why you can see the battery uh, percentage i mean and we have the vaulty icon and you can choose the view wi-fi icon enabling option over there so yeah a lot of icon options are there in the quick settings we have the brightness slider and we have the show when expanded or always then we have auto brightness icon so that's great let me go back we have the notifications we have the less boring heads up and the notification sound if active let me go back again in the buttons we have the invert layout only this looks pretty empty in my eyes at least and in the lock screen we have the display media cover art and we have the lock screen charging info then we have show ambient music ticker and in the gestures we have this quickly open camera so that's great you can launch the camera right from the lock screen and here we have the system navigation gestures and we have the like android 11 gestures of course like the edge gestures and we have the gesture bar lens changing option over here in the settings as you can see and right now i have it on long that's why it looks so long as you can see the pill bar and we have left edge right edge customization of course then there is the two and three button customizations too i mean turning on feature not customizing and we have the prevent ringing option then power menu option is there and inside power menu here you will find this advanced restart and right now i have it enabled and as you can see let me actually unlock it my power button is kind of broken so it locked the device and as you can see over here on the power menu this is how it looks like you can have the smart home kind of controls over here so you can turn on your smart lights if you have some and here we have the restart so if i tap on restart as you can see there is a reboot to system or recovery option then if you tap on these three dots you have the reboot to bootloader option so yes advanced reboot is actually there and then we have the swipe to take screenshot and as you can see you can enable it and right now the swipe to take screenshot is working totally fine you can share edit or delete them from here and we have the status bar gesture kind of thing like the sleep gesture uh, the double tap to sleep of course on the status bar works fine quick torch is there so if you tap and hold the power button it will toggle the torch let me go back we have the skip music track and that's it that's all for the customizations right now let me go into the battery settings and this is how it looks like we have the battery temperature on the bottom so that's a good thing and we have the screen on time then last full charge adaptive battery battery saver modes are there and if you tap here it shows the full usage and i would say the battery life should be good enough over here you can get four to five hours of screen on time easily if your device's battery's health is good because this is an old device let me go back we have the display settings and here we have the brightness level night light adaptive brightness styles and wallpapers and inside styles and wallpapers let me actually show you if we go into this wallpaper section we have this come alive and stuff so all these live wallpapers that you can download basic like wallpapers app by google and here we have the custom theming option so you can choose a font from here plethora of fonts are there as you are noticing lot of options and we have the choose icon in icons i only see one kind of icon over here kind of weird in the if you hit next and as you can see we have these colors option so there are plethora of colors like the yellow and stuff then we have this blue or violet kind of look but yes there i do not see the like proper red kind of icons so yeah you can change the accent colors from here and in the grid settings we have up to six by seven option let me go back if you scroll down we have the display size screen saver in the lock screen we have the ambient music ticker and stuff but let me tell you there is no always unlock with the fingerprint scanner in this rom let me scroll down we have the double tap to wake and enable blurs option and the double tap to wake actually works fine you should not worry about that we have the dark theme and then if you scroll down we have the theming options like the accent color presets 
as you can see plethora of accent colors and you don't have to do it from the styles and wallpapers if you choose them from here as you can see plethora of options are there for the accent colors then we have the primary color so you can change the background color to device default or one plus dark or ocean kind of stuff like that and we have these headline and body fonts as you are noticing plethora of fonts are there and we have the icon shapes so you can change them from here and we have the icon packs too and you can change them to these many options and by the way if you are using the dark theme as you can see right now i'm using the dark theme and here if i go into the primary color even though my like primary color is set to device default as you can see the background is completely dark and it is not gray or something it is completely black so looks really cool in the dark theme it doesn't show that like grayish kind of look but you can change that from here if you choose one plus dark it becomes a little bit gray and if you choose ocean it becomes this little bit blue kind of color so yeah these are the dark kind of themes that you get here right now it's time to go into the sound settings and this is how it looks like if you see the sound or volume panel this is how it looks you can expand them just like this and there are the vibrate for calls do not disturb and media and stuff like that is there let me scroll down we have the screenshot sound disabling option and there is the touch sound touch vibration etc disabling option and we have the me sound enhancer or the me audio delay you can turn it on from here and there are all these headset presets i usually use it with the youth edition and with the me audio direct the sound quality via the headphone jack and bluetooth as well should be good enough and there should not be any problems with sound overall in the ui now inside security we have this fingerprint and face unlock well i did not show you the face unlock earlier so let me just set it up now it shows about face unlock let's hit next even though there are some obstacles the face unlock setup was done so right now let me just try the face unlock i'll just double tap here and as you can see it unlocks really really fast let me try one more time so yes as soon as i double tap so if i'm not facing the device at my face as you can see right now i double tap does not unlock i okay so right now it unlocks when like as soon as i put the device close to my face so this is really cool and the face unlock works fairly fairly fast i would say in my personal experience and inside face unlock we have these options like unlocking your phone skip lock screen and stuff and you have the delete face data option right now let me just quickly show you the stock camera here well this is the google camera go edition present by default here and it works flawlessly as you can see it is working fine with the normal photo mode and if i switch to the front camera and there is the beautification mode too or kind of a smoothing mode and it should work fine it looks a little bit like white ish but yeah it should be fine for you so the front camera is actually working fine without any issues you have all these like tap to focus kind of thing and we have the settings option let me go back we have the video settings and from here it shows for how long you can take the video with whatever storage you have i mean and there is also the portrait mode so that should be working fine too so yeah this is a like really cool looking google camera go edition which is present by default here yes not as good as the miui camera or something but yes it takes normal basic pictures right now let me talk about some other things like the google assistant well okay google so as you can see the google assistant is right now working with the keyword let me try it one more time okay google okay google hey google so it works sometimes sometimes it doesn't so it's a little bit weird but you can always swipe up from these corners and it brings the google assistant as you can see so let me try one more time with the keyword okay google as you can see again it brings the google assistant super fine right now right now let me just talk about the ir blaster stuff if that is working and as you can see if i use this led rgb remote app so as you are noticing here the ir blaster is actually working if you are seeing that light over there so yes ir blaster actually works fine here no issues whatsoever with this led rgb remote app or any kind of app that you can use over here and if you're someone who uses banking apps on custom roms you should not be worried about it here as you can see it passes the safety net test even without magic hide or something you can use banking apps like google pay right out of the box here and here is the end to do end geek bin score for this rom so that's been it guys that's what i think about this pixis os this is a pretty great rom for the redmi note 5 pro but yes definitely if you want some features like the brightness sliding gesture and stuff then the always unlock with the fingerprint scanner those you don't get here 
So let me know in the comments what you guys think about this ROM on the Redmi Note 5 Pro. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.